And now I give the floor to Mr. Harald Winterling from Germany, Inter I don't pronounce probably correctly the name of the your organization, but Mr. Uh, Winterling from Germany. Thank you, Mr. President. It is interactive, and uh, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, parliamentarians, uh, for listening to me. I would like to comment um, on some things uh, that have already been said here and uh, some things we have seen in the films. I'd like to point out that the the harm that we saw in the first film uh, where a young boy was uh, circumcised in England uh, showed us only uh, a tiny little part of the harm done, necessarily done by any circumcision. The real harm is an adult life. And I'm very aware of the fact that many people are, are reluctant to speak about what uh, was being done to them. Some, some cannot speak for decades, some cannot speak uh, the whole life, but victims are among us and victims are speaking up. We are seeing a tiny the, uh, tip of an iceberg there um, and uh, there is really 99.9% .9 of the harm in adult life and the loss and uh, sexual uh, feeling and uh, what is removed uh, from a perfectly functioning uh, body. That's the first point I'd like to make. Uh, the second, second point that we saw in the second film and in some testimonies uh, from uh, professors uh, in the front, uh, we saw claims made about the perceived benefits of circumcision. Uh, I'm quite sure that the very people who told us these things are aware that uh, those claims are utterly wrong and that they are proven wrong. However, they keep repeating that, uh, sorry for the word, the same utter nonsense that have been proven uh, wrong. Then I'd like to come back to the point made right now uh, that we are, uh, we've heard uh, um, genital mutilation of males and females uh, together with uh, piercings and things like that. Of course, the divisory line should be between piercings and genital mutilation of either males or females. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Winterling.